Good evening everyone and welcome to this wonderful session on surgery. I wish you're all getting up, spinning up, spiking up like the scud missiles ready to attack the examiner on April 18th, right? So every day, one hour, you have Dr. Murli Bharadwaj, we will all study together. And this one hour, we discuss 40, 50 questions, and that should pump your energy to go back to the online MBBS.com video library, where you can be able to do the revision. And there are 1,500 high density videos waiting for you, along with 1,500 PowerPoint slides of notes. What else do you need? Ultimately, the secret, every time I keep telling the same, focus 950 topics that I gave you the list. If you don't have list, please call our helpline and uh, get the PDF of the list of topics. Clearly doing a, at least one time revision of past 20 years, AIMS All India, NEET PG, DNB, JIPMA, FMG question bank, topic wise. Once you do this exercise, it doesn't take more than 400 to 500 hours for the, of your time. And every Sunday we'll have a grant test and a discussion. So that should be enough for you to become the topper in the tomorrow's exam. Let's make the great beginning doctor. Good to see Jiaul Abedin. Kumud Ranjan and many more who are all online. And all the students who have joined the today's uh, great session. Now, anal fistula is the, another very favorite topic of the examiner. You have to be 100% sure about the good souls rule. So what is the exception to the good souls rule? Whenever the anterior external opening is situated more than three centimeters, then the good salts rule does not apply. So in the anal fistula, what does good salt rule say? The type of tract and the location of the internal opening, there's a relation between the two. Ankur Sharma and many more who are all online, 
um, who are all online? Yes. So the anterior external opening is more likely to have a straight tag, while a posterior placed external opening is more likely to have a curved tag. Piche curve hota hai, aage straight line hota hai. So typically, if you take uh, this very important illustration, whenever the external opening is anterior, uh, Anantamai Datta is saying, sir, please tell the URL of the list of topics you must, you just mentioned of thousand topics. So if you go to www.onlinembbs.com that is one place where you can get directly you will have 427 hours of revision in that the list of topics are already there every video's title is a high yield topic second way to do that is you can even call 9000868356 our helpline number you can whatsapp them and they'll be more than happy to give you the 950 topic list, doctor. Yeah. Now, you think of a dog. How will you remember this? Dog, the face, which is anterior, is a straight line. Whereas the dog tail is curved. So that is the point you need to remember. So whenever external opening is posterior to the transverse anal line, the the typical uh, fistulous tract will be curved. Whereas if it is anterior to the transverse anal line, it is more likely to be straight. But if it is once more long, more than three centimeters anterior to the transverse anal line, once more that is supposed to be curved. It is not straight. So that is the point you need to appreciate. So whenever the patient is lying supine, the imaginary trans anal line is drawn to the ischial tuberosities. And uh, if it is more than three centimeters from the from the anal verge, then it is more likely to be curved as an exception is what you need to remember. So what is the treatment of choice for a low fistula in ANO is a very important question. Fistulotomy. Fistulotomy. So you can appreciate how you can see the external opening of the fistula in ANO. Brother, now, what is a fistula? Any abnormal connection between the two epithelium lined vessels or organs is called a fistula. Two epithelium lined organs, any abnormal connection. So any anorectal fistula is between the epithelialized surface of the anal canal and the perianal skin. So the internal opening of this fistulous tract is located in the anorectal lumen, whereas external opening is there on the perianal skin is what you need to remember. Sometimes a pre-existing anorectal abscess can burst spontaneously and open up a fistulous tract. So if you look at etiology, a lot of times it is the anal crypts which have the glands. So from there, this fistulous tract originate. But Crohn's disease, TB, LGV, actinomycosis, rectal duplication, foreign body, malignancy, any of them can be the predisposing factor for the fistula in ANO is what you need to remember. So if you look at the anatomy of the muscles, there is a internal sphincter, external sphincter, intersphincteric groove, and puborectalis, the levator and these are the important muscles to be remembered. So Park has divided the 
anorectal fistulas, there is a Parks classification unit, remember. Type 1 is basically called the intersphincteric. So if you look at this, uh, this one, intersphincteric, this is the most common type, 45% of cases. Then type 2 is called transsphincteric. And type 3 is called supra-sphincteric fistula. And uh, type 4 is called extra-sphincteric fistula. So that is how the Parks classification is what you need to remember. So the intersphincteric. So Anantamai Datta is asking, sir, can hemorrhoids also cause the fistula? See, fundamentally, a lot of times the origin of the fistula has some infective etiology underneath, like a abscess bursting and opening of the tract. So hemorrhoids are more to do with the uh, the venous engorgement. So, uh, clinically they look similar, but the etiology is slightly different uh, between that of the fistula in anno versus that of uh, the hemorrhoids. So, intersphincteric is through dentate line to anal verge, transphincteric is through external sphincter into the ischiorectal fossa, supra is through the anal crypt and encircling the entire sphincter ending in ischiorectal fossa is what you need to remember. So this transphincteric, intersphincteric, extra sphincteric, all these parts classification of anorectal fistula, you should be 100% sure to recognize tomorrow, examiner is going to give this as an image-based MCQ. So how are the clinically present? A chronic, so you can see the uh, opening of the fistula, opening of the fistula. So chronic discharge from this non-healing abscess. Whenever they're going for defecation, it can present with a pain with defecation or pruritis, anything can be. And there can be fever, etc. if there is any abscess, uh, development of the abscess. On examination, there will be a draining pustule, erythema, induration, excoriated skin, etc. etc. So, how do you examine? You need to examine under anesthesia. Anoscopy, proctoscopy, you can assess the internal opening and occult abscess. Similarly, there is an endoscopic ultrasound. Using that, you can, then MRI is considered to be the gold standard for making the diagnosis of fistula in anno. It is non-invasive. You don't need to, uh, you don't need to invade into the already painful anal canal. Fistulography, CT, any of them can be used for the diagnosis. So ultimately, what is the goal of therapy of fistula in anno doctor treatment? You have to drain that local infection. Abscess anyway, drain it. Eradicate the fistula tract. And you need to preserve the native sphincteric function. At the same time, you should avoid recurrence. That is a challenge. Because the sphincters are involved, any amount of manipulation while doing fistulectomy can in turn affect the uh, sphincteric function that can lead to incontinence, which is much more a grave problem, right? And incontinence in turn will lead to soiling and that lead to once more the recurrence of the fistula. All these issues will be there. So fistulotomy, fistulectomy, seton technique, advancement flaps and lift procedure. You need to know about the treatment of fistula in anna. One, two comments about each of them. You need to be aware because this is one of the favorite areas of examiner. Fistulotomy. What are we doing in this? We open the fistula tract, make incision of the entire length of the fistula using the probe as a guide. Intersphincteric fistula, 
transpintering fistula involving less than 30% of the voluntary muscle are the right scenarios. Intersplinteric fistulae and transpintering fistulae. Right scenarios for fistulotomy. If it is an anteriorly placed fistulae in the woman, which has more a straight tract, fistulotomy is avoided. You can also do a staged fistulotomy. That is another important thing. You can pass a seton across the fistula. Fistula snack, you will put a seton and you left, you, you leave it in the in place with tie, and the fistula will granulate and heals and completely closes. That's the ultimate purpose. So this is a typical procedure of fistulotomy where uh, you are able to dissect through the tract of the fistula and enable the healing and close. So that's what you are going to do. Then this is a staged fistula where uh, you are passing a set on external anal sphincter, set on in the fistula tract. And uh, this is how the set on passes and that set on will promote the uh, granulation tissue. That's how you are closing the fistula tract. Then comes the fistulectomy. In this completely score, Nikal area, you are coring out the fistula by a diathermic artery. And uh, when will you do fistulectomy whenever it is crossing the levels of sphincters with a lot of secondary extensions? Then fistulectomy should be done. So post-operatively, you should make the person to have SIDS bath, antibiotics, analgesics, and laxatives. Now, one two words about seton. Baya seton kya hota hai? Seton hota hai non-absorbable, non-degenerative silk or linen ligature. And when will you apply the seton, doctor? Interspinteric fistulas. It is kept for three months, replaced by a railroad technique. There are two kinds, loose setons, tight or cutting setons. Loose seton has a no tension, no intent to cut the tissue. And it is used for the recurrent post-operative fistulas. There is tight or cutting seton. It is placed with an intention of cutting through an enclosed muscle. And uh, when will you use a cutting seton? If the fistula is in a high position and it is passing through the spintric muscle. And uh, if you use the tight or cutting seton, uh, it has got a minimum spintric dysfunction. That is one advantage is what you need to remember. Then the next option available for you is endorectal advancement flap. So you will do a fistulectomy. You will core out the entire tract. You do the closure of the communication with the anal lumen using a vascularized flap. That is advancement flap. Success rate is variable, basically. So this is how a mucosal flap with portion of the muscle fibers the flap is advanced over the internal opening and it is being closed, which is called mucosal advancement flap. Then you also have an option to put fibrin plugs. So plugging of the fistula with a device made from a small intestinal mucosa, submucosa, is called fibrin plug. It is positioned inside of the anus with the suture and 80% success rate is there and a very short to post-operative state. So this is how a fibrin plug is being placed in order to close that internal opening. So that is what uh, you will do with a fibrin club. Plug is what you need to remember. You can also use fibrin glue as a non-surgical operation option in order to uh, occlude the fistula. Fistula is like a guha. 
एक गुफा गुफा सो गुफा को बंद करना बोले तो उसके अंदर जरा कुछ ना कुछ पत्थर डालना है राइट सो फिब्रिन ग्लू इज समथिंग लाइक दैट इज फॉर्चुनेट टू रिमेम्बर देन कम्स ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एमसीक्यू फॉर द टुमोरो एग्जामिनर लिफ्ट प्रोसीजर लाइगेशन of interspinteric fistulous tract is the full form of lift procedure okay so uh mainly you need to know the full form of this acronym that's how so now doctor you got some uh stimulus initiation while attending this class about anal fistulas how important they are one of the topics frequently asked by the examiner good to see shivaya and many more who are all online so please tell all your friends doctor every day whether it is sunday or monday sankranti ho ya ramzan ho hum sab milenge और मिलके पढ़ाई करेंगे दैट इज माई प्रॉमिस टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो डॉक्टर प्लीज टेल यूर फ्रेंड्स दैट एवरी डे वन अवर एटलीस्ट फिफ्टी टू सिक्सटी एम सी क्यूज ऑल थ्री हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी फाइव डेज यू हैव डॉक्टर मुरली भरद्वाज यूर रूमेट क्लासमेट entrance exam mate you are not alone at all sitting over there whether there are some setbacks depressions discontinuities whatever it is there just come and join every day you get an opportunity to restart your preparation with an added energy this one hour of our session with this revision should review at least 10 to 15 concepts strongly and uh, that should inspire you to go back to the online mbbs.com video library and uh, we will have and you you take opportunity at least another 3 to 4 hours you spend on the high density videos with the powerpoint everything available that's more than enough at least 4 5 months of your precious time you spend with dr murli bharadwaj and do the revision in a focused manner you don't need anything else to become the winner and above all all our sessions on youtube i am free and all yours so let me tell you right so doctor aortic dissection what is the investigation of choice of aortic dissection undoubtedly it is ct and if it, if the radiologist is experienced then even transthoracic echo is as sensitive and specific in detecting the aortic dissection as much as the mdct what well, assertion reason is true but reason is not the reason for the assertion A 50-year-old male presents to the emergency, high blood pressure. 50 years means the beginning of the atherosclerotic age group, and uh, hypertension will increase the sheer stress on the wall of the aorta, which predisposes to the dissection. His heart rate is 120, and a CECT is done. which is showing the aortic dissection what do you need to do you need to do the surgical repair so is it involving ascending aorta or descending aorta or both of them debaki which type and accordingly whether medical management or surgical management all these things we have discussed debated and made available in the online mbbs.com video library doctor please take a chance to do that revision what is the most common presentation of the aorto iliac occlusive disease so the lerith syndrome typically they will have a gluteal claudication 
So basically, the gluteal vessels are arising ultimately from the branches of the iota only. So any occlusive disease in iota will decrease the blood flow to the vessel supplying the gluteal area, so gluteal claudication. Even that lead to impotence. But more common is the gluteal claudication is what you need to remember. A 30 year old man presents with cramping gluteal pain. See how frequently it is asked. Iske pehle Ames November mein poocha. Ayoto iliac occlusive disease Lerith syndrome ke baare mein. And once more it is asked in NEET PG 2020. So what you need to know is. It's not about reading entire Bailey and Love, entire Davidson and Harrison, or entire uh, Datta and uh, Shah. How many books you will be able to master? Simply like that. Impossible. What is important for you is, what are that 40-50 topics examiner pakdega? Every time puchega question. Or sure short topics ko revision karke, all aspects of it. Bas, you will become a winner. But there are 950 topics in that way. You have to make sure that you finished all 950 and you are good at 950. Any dimensions questions come, you are ready for this 950. 950 topics time like that. Hardly three to four hundred hours. So that is the reason. Don't imagine. Entrance preparation is something a unsurmountable expedition. No, sir. It is a very easy to do. Khelte, khelte, topper ban sakte, doctor. Let me tell you. Only thing is don't run with some fancy. By wo, wo padrai, maybe, maybe wo padunga. Wo uske liye achcha hai. Aapke liye nahi ho sakta. Aap ho sakta bhi. Anything is possible. So that is the reason you think yourself, am I good by reading book, am I better or listening video, am I better, writing notes, am I better, not writing notes and only underlying, am I better, what is good for you as a learner, you already know because you had been in this business of learning, cracking exams, etc. for the past uh, Immemorial time, right? You know better. Doctors means we ourselves are supposed to teach the entire world. So once you know that better, what applies to your physiology apply karna. Sometimes people are biased. Coaching lady se seat aata kya, toppers ka tips kya hota. If a tip worked for some topper, it may not work for you doctor, let me tell you. But what is the universal truth is whether you run on the streets or whether you sit on the top of the coconut tree or whether you go and jump into the ocean, finishing these 950 high yield topics, solving the 30,000 unique MCQs from the last 20 years of the NEET PG, AIMS, PGI, JIPMER, TNB, F FMCG, FMGE. That is all uh, the secret of winning. It, it all depends on uh, uh, it all depends on uh, your style of doing. But my job is every day to sit with you and inspire you. So doctor, 30 year old man, cramping gluteal pain, pain in the leg after walking, then which vessel is involved doctor? Iotoiliac occlusive disease. A man presents with deep jaundice, fever, chills. Fever, jaundice, chills, right? So the triad of clinical features, cholangitis, MRCP is shown to you. So what is your diagnosis, doctor? Primary sclerosing cholangitis. So typically, there is an intrahepatic stricturing with alternating normal and dilated segments of the bile ducts. Normal 
and uh, dilated bile ducts. So this is the MRCP and this is the ERCP, endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatic ography. Once more, NEET PG 2020 question. A patient presents with fever, jaundice, upper abdominal pain, ultrasound shows common bile duct with dilated bile duct and biliary radicals. What is the next appropriate step? MRCP, ERCP is what you need to remember. So doctor, what is the approach to a patient who is having a cholestatic biochemical profile? That is obstructive jaundice. Alkaline phosphodase elevate ho gaya. Gamma glutamyl, transaminase elevate ho gaya. So cholestatic conjugated hyperbilirubinemia hai. So cholestatic biochemical profile hai to, you have to do ultrasound. If it is not diagnostic, a lot of times ultrasound can be able to identify the cause of the biliary obstruction. Then you need to do MRCP. If it is normal, then liver biopsy. What do you see in liver biopsy? Sometimes small duct, bile duct, primary sclerosing cholangitis, hato, MRCP will be normal, ultrasound will be non diagnostic. Suppose if it is a large duct primary sclerosing cholangitis, that can be picked up by the MRCP. If MRCP is non-diagnostic, then you need to do ERCP. And uh, if ERCP also turns out to be normal, but the cholestatic picture is there, then liver biopsy for the diagnosis of small duct primary sclerosing cholangitis. And ERCP shows ultimately large duct primary sclerosing cholangitis even if it is missed by the mrcp is what you need to remember now comes corrosive injury in esophagus a child is swallowed a watch battery containing alkaline content what do you want to do immediately x-ray curve in corrosive injury of the esophagus you should remember generally people unless they consume a large volume of alkali, it won't lead to injury. And alkali is formed fibrous scar and the um, acids form eschar. Then uh, acids damage more than the alkalis. The stomach damage will be more with the acid than alkali. Now comes damage control surgery. Where is the second step of management in the damage control resuscitation carried out? Well, first step kya hai, second kya hai, third, fourth maloom hai to kisko kaha karte maloom ho jayega. Right? So that is the whole problem in medical college. We can easily pass MBBS exams. So all of you know very well. Ophthalmology to pass, you just read two topics. What are they? Cataract glaucoma. Khatam. To pass ENT, what do you require? If you know ASOM, CSOM, Khatam, you are through. There are Rinni, Weber, Pakadke, Kuch, Nautanke, Kareto, pass ENT. Like that, we know what is the trick of passing every MBBS exam. So ultimately, kya hota hai ki, out of this 950 very high yield topics which I have given you, 200 to 300 topics kabhi pada bhi nahi, suna bhi nahi, dekha bhi nahi. That kind of topics will be 200 to 300 topics. So now, for example, retinitis pigmentosa. There are students who didn't even listen about this condition in ophthalmology. From day after tomorrow, we are starting ophthalmology division, right? By tomorrow, we are done with the surgery. There are topics like strabismus, which is a very high yield topic for the NEET PG examiner. We have never read this topic. So like that, in our five years journey in medical college, a lot of topics without even touching them, like renal tubular acidosis, we never read it. Nephron physiology, we never read it in physiology days. 
still we can get we can pass with the first class score that is the whole uh, uh, malady of uh, the medical school and that is the reason what i'm saying is 200 to 300 topics which are very weak jara usko ye 950 topics mein usko jara marammat karna hai immediately you repair that so for that you should know what are those 950 topics totally right so uh, please make sure so damage control surgery is what you need to know good to see sarang big body bivgade bivgade yes after a long time thanks to all of you for coming a quarter century students i always enjoy this kind of class so doctor damage control resuscitation permissive hypotension minimal normal tension then hemostatic resuscitation with massive transfusion protocol then hemorrhage control that is the purpose of the damage control surgery pehla bleeding ko band karo that is important so in a trauma patient what is the cause of the mortality doctor head injury is the leading cause of the death and hemorrhagic shock is a leading preventable cause of death in trauma that's what you need to remember so if you look at the damage control surgery doctor you have step step zero early recognition hemorrhage control then part one or um, you have to do it in uh, operating room control hemorrhage exploration control contamination intra abdominal packing and temporary closure temporary closure mesh wo sab laga ke close karo agar bada wound hai to abdomen mein blunt injury or penetrating trauma you apply a mesh temporary closure then part 2 this is what examiner is asking an important mcq icu mein you have to do core rewarming correct coagulopathy maximize hemodynamics give ventilatory support and injure injuries identify what are they then part three is once more done in operating room pack removal and definitive repair should be done so this is the sequence of the damage control sequence on which examiner is once more going to ask you a question in need pg 2021 the control of the active hemorrhage and the contamination is part of which stage doctor the uh typically in the part two stage two then extra dural hemorrhage sub dural hemorrhage subarachnoid hemorrhage you have to be 100 percent sure my three points about each of them fata fata ko bol de to. right so extra dural sub dural hemorrhage subarachnoid hemorrhage First, what is the story? Uh, first, what is the story? A young man trying to meet his girlfriend. Girlfriend is texting him. Are jaldi aao. If you don't come on time, I'm going to run away with your roommate. He's speeding up, speeding up. Talk. There was an accident. Then all the public came, he said, he just got up and said, nothing happened to me, nothing happened to me. I'm all right, he said. But few steps he walked it and then once more fell down into unconsciousness. So what do you call that doctor? You call it as the lucid, lucid interval. So lucid interval is the characteristic finding of extra hemorrhage it is an arterial bleeding arising from the meningeal blood vessels and if you happen to take the ct scan extra dural will be a biconvex opacity like bleed then subdural hemorrhage ka story kya hai? 
A elderly man was brought by his daughter-in-law. She says, मैं मेरे डॉटर मेरे फादर इला को इतना प्यार करता हूं सच ए ग्रेट मैन वॉज ए मेजर इन आर्मी बट आजकल ही इज फॉरगेटिंग डॉक्टर एनी थिंग इफ आई पुट ब्रेकफास्ट ऑल्सो ही इज फॉरगेटिंग डॉक्टर आई डोंट नो देन यू आस्क दिस देर एनी ट्रामा डिड ही फॉल डाउन नो डॉक्टर ही डिड नॉट फॉल डाउन ही विल मेक एवरी वन एल्स टू फॉल इन लव विथ हिम प्लीज डू समथिंग फॉर माई फादर इन लैंड एंड यू आर ए नाइट ड्यूटी डॉक्टर यू से hey night duty na you just take your father in law it's elderly people are known to forget the things you come later you will tell but before going she takes out one ct scan and say please see the ct scan doctor then uh, you are busy intern there are about 30 40 emergencies before you right then you have seen the ct scan did you find a concave like the crescent shaped opacity very long one so that is the story of subdural hemorrhage lot of times trauma history is not dramatic unlike in extradural hemorrhage elderly person presenting with forgetfulness is a kind of presentation and a crescent shaped long bleed which is a venous bleed basically that is subdural then subarachnoid hemorrhage what is the story oh my god doctor such a severe pain never in my life i ever had this kind of pain doctor that's called thunder clap headache it's called thunder clap headache so typically when you check that person he will also have a significant hypertension sometimes at the time of presentation and the lateral ventricles will be there no? so here you have something called sylvian fissure so there there is collection of blood in the sylvian fissure that is the subarachnoid hemorrhage is what you need to remember now let us see the story what is the diagnosis based on the ct what is this doctor this is by convex opacity that's the reason extradural hemorrhage what is the investigation of choice of subdural hemorrhage non contrast to ct so you can see this kind of a crescent shaped long bleed in an elderly person presenting with forgetfulness is the presenting feature so that is the story so more extensive discussion on each of these topics my my job is only to precipitate the high yield topics right and every 3 4 days i am going to finish one subject you also parallelly finish the subject with me by going back to the online mbbs.com video library doctor okay so now a symptomatic gallstone more than 3 cm what is the treatment laparoscopic cholecystectomy is what you need to remember good to see rifa riyas arun guru and many more wow i am so happy 30 students today in the live class so please invite your friends doctor whenever you are coming unka haath bhi pakad ke aana Thaki, more the merry, and keep answering the questions while we are having discussion. And also, you can type some good points that come to your mind. So, one hour you are spending with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj every evening means that should add around hundred hours of energy into you, and you should feel that oh, I am no more alone. Hey, my chatty mate. classmate roommate tablemate murli bharadwaj is available every day to study along with me that's what you should tell your friends right doctor so now a symptomatic gallstone more than 3 cm acha iska story kya hai when do you do colis prophylactic cholecystectomy doctor one of the important questions 
in a case when will you remove the gallbladder in a symptomatic person if there are risk factors for carcinoma so any anomalous pancreatic biliary ductal junctions colidocal cyst gallbladder adenoma porcelain gallbladder any solitary gallbladder polyp larger than 1 cm in sare cheezon mein patient asymptomatic hai abdominal pain nahi hai kuch bhi nahi hai fir bhi you will do cholecystectomy then what are the other indications if there is a cholecystolithiasis that is bile duct stone bile duct stone so then also you will do a uh, prophylactic cholecystectomy any gallstone more than 3 cm please don't forget this is what exactly examiner is asking the question and the patient lives in a remote location from the healthcare facility any sickle cell disease or hereditary cirrhosis is also you will be doing the cholecystectomy because cirrhosis or sickle cell disease is basically what hemolytic condition and that lead to development of pigment stones so that is the reason cholecystectomy any transplant or immunosuppressant therapy or young age they mandate you to do the prophylactic cholecystectomy is what you need to remember now how do you clinically approach the gallstone is the favorite question of the examiner i am really sorry the the print is very small but let me tell you all these ppts are all made available in the online mbbs.com video library so once you find gallstone look whether symptomatic or asymptomatic agar symptomatic hai then give nsaids narcotic pain relievers medical management then look for complications then if complication is there if cholecystolithiasis is there you do ercp and laparoscopic cholecystectomy if there is a acute cholecystitis then do laparoscopic cholecystectomy within 72 hours if there is a pancreatitis even before you discharge the patient you do the laparoscopic cholecystectomy so complications will mandate in a symptomatic gallstone disease for you to go ahead with laparoscopic cholecystectomy suppose there are no complications and the patient is a candidate for surgery yes then laparoscopic cholecystectomy with or without ercp if he is not a candidate for surgery then mild symptoms small radiolucent stone good gallbladder function then you can medically manage by with the oral dissolution therapy or extra corporeal shock wave therapy but both the scenarios there is a high chance of recurrence in gallstones so if there are mild symptoms small radiolucent stone good gallbladder function if it is not there if it is a large pigmented or a radio opaque gallstone then you need to do emergency laparoscopic cholecystectomy so ek bar aapke ek friend hona hai doctor one friend in life who shares a similar kind of maniac impulsive impulses and obsessions along with us who will appreciate all our madness at least one friend hona hai unke sath baith ke ek bar tell that i am a gallstone patient you are the consultant what are you going to do different clinical scenarios you have to debate with him then you will remember all mcqs in neat pg surgery wala questions are all on management 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 how will you manage a breast carcinoma how will you manage a renal stone how will you manage a gallstone different permutations and combinations of the clinical scenarios you should be very sure when you are approaching the exam most common type of gallstone is a cholesterol stone most common functional tumor of the endocrine pancreas 
of all this the zollinger ellison syndromes gastrinoma is most common very good arun and many more who are all please keep punching your answers what is this triangle given in the image doctor this is the place where most of the gastrinomas arise so called gastrinoma triangle now comes intercostal drainage tube a 44 year old male underwent the video assisted thoracoscopic surgery for thymectomy for myasthenia gravis during the process there is an accidental injury of the pleura you put it drain now the question comes when will you remove that intercostal drainage so one of the common decisions taken in the morning rounds as a house surgeon is when will you remove the intercostal drain issue after complete expansion of the lungs and less than 200 milliliters of output from the drain for two consecutive days though then less than 200 ml aaye to x-ray kare to complete expansion of lung dikhaye to that is the time where you have to do the intercostal drainage tube removal so what indicates that it is a functioning intercostal drainage you look at the column of the underwater sealed bag you can see the movement of the water because of the breathing that is a sign of adequate function of ic intercostal drainage tube now comes the liver failure a five year old child with acute liver failure because of the wilson's disease what is the king's college criteria for the transplantation purely batti marne wala item hai doctor nothing to do with intelligence so king's college ne liver transplantation karne ke liye criteria criteria banaya to aap jara isko jara dhyan se you have to make a you, you need to learn right so now what are the criteria so the king's college criteria of liver transplantation so if there is an acute liver failure due to acetaminophen toxicity if the ph is less than 7.3 and arterial serum lactate is more than 3 millimoles per liter transplant karo or if three things happen within a 24 hour period of time serum creatinine shot more than 3.4 inr is more than 6.5 and grade 3 or grade 4 hepatic encephalopathy then transplantation karo any acute liver failure due to other etiologies if the inr is more than 6.5 and encephalopathy is present whatever be the grade do the transplantation or if any three of the conditions like age less than 10 or more than 40 jaundice more than 7 days before development of encephalopathy inr more than 3.5 bilirubin more than 17 and any unfavorable etiology like wilson's disease idiosyncratic drug reaction or a seronegative hepatitis they are the king's college criteria for liver transplantation Deco? you still have to mug it whether you tomorrow want to become a dermatologist or a ophthalmologist king's college criteria padai karna padega kyunki examiner ke question bank mein baita hai that is very important a patient present with, with encephalopathy grade 1 and 2 mild ascites serum bilirubin 2.5 serum albumin less than 2.8 inr 2.3 now the child turkit poog classification oh my god so one more patti marne wala item so 
your baggage keep becoming heavier and heavier and heavier as you move forward in the preparation doctor that is the reason i always say carry yourself light weight just because your friend read some harrison tumbi harrison banne ka koshish mat karna beta hum harrison ka jati nahi hai hum to david son ka level ka bhi nahi hai हम तो डेविडसन के ग्रैंड सन का रिव्यू नोट्स का लेवल का है राइट सो दट इज रीजन डोंट बी कैरीड अवे बाय व्हाट योर फ्रेंड्स आर डूइंग नॉट नेसेसरली रिक्वायर्ड यू शुड बिफोर यू रीड समथिंग इट शुड बी ए हाई फोकस्ड फ्रीक्वेंटली टेस्टेड मटेरियल व्हिच इज देयर इन द क्वेश्चंस एग्जामिनर्स क्वेश्चन मैन फर्स्ट क्राइटेरिया सेकंड is it really to be mugged is it so frequently asked in the entrance or only one or two times sporadically came so what trend maloom hona hai which grass you have to eat which grass you need not and leave it right so child turkuti pug classification definitely important hai many times asked it is a grass meant to be eaten and cephalopathy ascites bilirubin albumin pt there the criteria accordingly 1 2 3 points are given and 5 to 6 points will make it class a 7 to 9 points will make it class b 10 to 15 points make it class c remember examiner definitely will ask in neat pg 2021 now doctor a middle aged pregnant female with a history of hypertension diabetes cardiac bypass presented with a non tender non tender swelling of the left lower limb what investigation you want to do obviously venous doppler a patient presents with unilateral leg standing progressive swelling of the left lower limb it is more in the proximal part compared to distal part distal part to nazuk hai proximal part to mota hai and non pitting that makes it a lymphedema now comes parathyroid parathyroid gland is implanted in which muscle it is implanted in brachioradialis muscle so parathyroidectomy is of two kinds doctor subtotal parathyroidectomy or total parathyroidectomy plus auto transplantation between the two if you are given two choices very good arun guru i really appreciate uh, uh so keep answering the questions while discussion is going on also punch some important points that come to your mind so subtotal thyroidectomy remains the surgical intervention of choice wherever it is indicated and uh, the preferred reimplantation site of auto transplantation is sternocleidomastoid or you can put it in the brachioradialis muscle is what you need to remember abhi aa gaya another batti maarne wala item miami criteria भाई कोई ग्लासगो कोमा स्केल बोलता है कोई किंग्स कॉलेज क्राइटेरिया बोलता है कोई चाइल्ड प्यूग तुर्की टू एंड अनदर विल आस्क यू मियामी हो माय गॉड कितने क्राइटेरिया रिमेंबर करेंगे डॉक्टर बट स्टिल देयर इज नो अदर ऑप्शन सो व्हाट इज द मियामी क्राइटेरिया फॉर पैराथायरॉइडक्टोमी हाउ विल यू सक्सेस हाउ डू यू नो पैराथायरॉइडक्टोमी करने के बाद वेदर रियली इट इज अ सक्सेसफुल रिमूवल ऑफ द लीजन और नॉट at least 50% reduction of the pth if there is a 50% reduction more than 50% reduction of the pth parat hormone from the pre incision or pre excision of pth measurement in a sample drawn 10 minutes following the resection that is the miami criteria 50% girna chahiye now come for the indications for parathyroidectomy any symptomatic patient with parathyroidectomy always parathyroidectomy hyperparathyroidism is associated with hypercalcemia so hypercalcemia lead to all types of 
problems, including polyuria, etc., etc. Asymptomatic, when will you do? If the serum calcium level is one milligram per deciliter or greater than the accepted normal range, normal range will be one jada hydro. 24 hour urinary calcium is greater than 400 mg per day. Creatinine clearance is reduced by 30%. T score is less than 2.5 and age younger than 50 years. There are the indications for parathyroid activity. So, what is primary hyperparathyroidism? If there is any adenoma in the parathyroid that produces too much of PDH, which is called primary. Secondary hyperparathyroidism, if I'm having renal failure, I don't have vitamin D. If I don't have vitamin D, I have hypocalcemia. If I have hypocalcemia, hypocalcemia stimulates my parathyroid gland to produce a lot of parathormone. That is called secondary hyperparathyroidism. So, commonly primary hyperthyroidism is sporadic or familial. Single parathyroid adenoma is the most common cause. Parathyroid hyperplasia in 13% of cases and less than 1% parathyroid carcinoma. Typically, primary hyperparathyroidism, 5th to 6th decade may aata hai. Female preponderance is there. Incidentally, also sometimes it is elevated when the person goes for serum calcium levels. And kidney stones is the most common clinical presentation of the primary hyperparathyroidism is what you need to remember. Now comes prostate cancer. Without a question in prostate cancer, agar need to PG hai to mera naam Murli Bharadwaj nahi hoga, nahi hoga. Such a guaranteed topic. So, the histological grading is by the Gleason score. It is hormone dependent, very much hormone dependent. So, doctor, So it is very much hormone dependent. Histological grading is by Gleason score. But you need to also remember that 70% it arises from the peripheral zone. So parathyroid gland ke peripheral zone, peripheral zone. 15, so that is the most common location. 50 to 20 percent from central zone and 10 to 15 percent from the transitional zone. Most of the cells in prostate gland are all glandular type. That's the reason most common type of prostate cancer is adenocarcinoma is what you should remember. So which lobe of the prostate may uvula, visaike will be there. Where the bladder impression will be created. It is the median lobe is what you should understand. So, yes. The next topic is Ryle's shoe. Very good. Arun adds a very good point. Uh, can prostate arise, carcinoma prostate arise from peripheral zone, but benign lesions are from the central zone. Beautiful, beautiful Arun. Dr. Aman is saying, last year I was your student, sir. But Aman, Every year I continue to claim to be your teacher, even when after you become topper. 
Good. Thanks for coming, Aman, and uh, giving those kind words. Now, rail shoe. The length of rail shoe. How do you calculate? It is the ear lobe to the mouth. To the midpoint between the xiphoid process and umbilicus. So, mouth, ear lobe to mouth, midpoint between xiphoid process and umbilicus. The correct procedure of inserting, how will you insert, doctor? So, wonderful, Dr. Aman. Proud to know that you have become a postgraduate in surgery. Excellent, doctor. Excellent. So, another three to four days, we are launching a revolutionary app, Incas app ka next version. I want Aman and everybody. Everyone has something to contribute to the world. So, you can upload three minute learning videos. कुछ टॉपिक पढ़ा, कुछ पेपर के ऊपर स्क्रिबल किया, रिवीजन करना चाहते हो, फोन ओपन करो और तीन मिनट में रिवीजन करके डालो, यू विल गेट लाइक्स, शेयर्स, फैंस, फॉलोअर्स अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड। सो वी आर गोइंग टू रेवोल्यूशनाइज़ द मेडिकल एजुकेशन बाय मेकिंग नॉलेज फ्री, नॉलेज शेयर्ड, � Thousands of three-minute videos uploaded across the globe in the medical education. So don't forget to download the Incas app. Once it is another three, four days we are launching, we are doing final testing of it. So the patient should be sitting with the flexed neck. So patient flexing his neck and drinking water while nasogastric tube is being inserted is what you need to remember. A 10 year old child presented with unprovoked, without any provocation, acute onset of the left testicular pain, then testicular torsion. Often the torsion is because of an anatomical abnormality of the testis which is hanging. That is often there on both the sides. So immediate exploration on both the sides should be done. A scrotal swelling, non-reducible, but disappears when the child wakes up from the sleep, is a congenital hydrocele. So what is congenital hydrocele, doctor? Why does it happen? When the processus vaginalis remains patent, then that will allow the fluid from the peritoneum to accumulate in the scrotum. So now let us go to Hydrocele, quick points about hydrocele. Hydrocele can be a non-communicating and a communicating hydrocele. Non-communicating is because of a localized infection or a trauma. Any previous varicocelectomy or inguinal surgery or any testicular or scrotal malignancy, anything can lead to the development of the collection of the fluid which is called hydrocele that impedes the fluid drainage. Wow, that's good to see Navneeta Sharma. Sir, listening to you again feels good. Same feeling over here, doctor. Thanks for coming. So any imbalance between secretion and absorption of the fluid in tunica vaginalis lead to accumulation of fluid in tunica vaginalis and that lead to the formation of hydrocele. That is the story of non-communicating. Communicating kya hota hai? Kyo hota hai? Congenital patent processes vaginalis. There is a communication between peritoneal cavity and the scrotum. And that lead to free flow of the peritoneal fluid into the tunica vaginalis. That lead to accumulation of the fluid within the tunica vaginalis. That lead to hydro hydrocele. So, because of that, the spermatic cord can still be left above the testicle and the accumulated fluid. So that is the reason a positive pinch test 
that differentiates hernia from hydrocele. Very good, Dr. <laughs> Navnita Sharma. Uh, to get a good, you are all the upcoming promising surgeons, physicians, cardiologists, neurologists. So whenever you are getting up from the sleep and starting your day, doctor, remember, you are born with a purpose, doctor. You are all born with a purpose. God simply did not create you just like that. That's the reason out of millions of people who want to become medical student, you became that. Obviously, it's a purpose of the God. So there is a reason always uh, tell when you are going to the reading room or whenever you are going for a battle called exam hall. Hey, God, you created me with a purpose for me to become a plastic surgeon or a cardiothoracic surgeon or a cardiologist. Give me all that courage to become a winner because after all, it is all your design. Right. So with that courage, you should go to exam. You should not keep uh, uh, telling the mind that Are my Buljaro, what kind of brain I'm having. So much to read, man. So much competition, man. All this anxiety, tension, exam cut tension. All these are artificial feelings, doctor. Throw them in dustbin. You are the pond of energy, born with a purpose to become something great. That's how we are meeting every day over here, reiterating that preamble of our life and then restarting with a ignited state of mind, right? So now, the, all that accumulating fluid will allow the light to disperse through the scrotum. That's the reason transilvination is positive. Increased volume stretches the layer of the scrotum. That is the reason there is a scrotal swelling and heaviness. And there is a fluid motion that will occur. That's the reason there is a positive fluctuation test. And surrounding testicular structures are compressed and irritated. That's the reason scrotal discomfort. And long-standing compression will decrease the vascular supply. Very good, Navnita. Another feather in our cap to know that you got general surgery last year. Superb, superb doctor. So Navanita, Aman and many more. They were all preparing like you last year, last before year. And then they realized their dream. So I am also hoping many more good news to come from all our viewers joining every day with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. So testicular atrophy can occur. So hydrocele can be congenital or acquired. Congenital is a communicating one with a patency or process vaginalis. Non-communicating can be idiopathic or it can be secondary to trauma, testicular torsion, infection, post varicoselectomy, tumor, or after primary repair. Now comes transplantation. Renal transplantation where genani, Mother gives kidney to her putta, son, is an example of allograft. What are the most common indication for the liver transplant in children? Biliary atresia, congenital biliary atresia. During diagnostic laparoscopy for undescended testes, the testicular vessels are found to be absent. What is the most appropriate next step that you want to do? There is nothing that you need to do for that. During exploratory uh, diagnostic laparoscopy. With regard to the undescended testis, surgery for undescended testis, just because you have done the undescended testis, ko nikal diya, I mean, uh, usko orchidopexy karke niche khincha. You have pulled it down into the scrotum. That does not decrease the chance of development of testicular cancer. Still the risk is there. 70% of the cryptorchid testis descend by third month. And uh, a good number of all the patients with undescended testis have normal secondary sexual characters. 
and the risk of developing testicular malignancy is not 20 times but it is two to eight times is the risk is what you need to remember so doctor with that we will call it a day and uh, thank you very much for joining this wonderful evening once more tomorrow at six o'clock with dr murli bharadwaj every day study well full 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 energy no depression no anxiety nicely three four hundred hours another 75 days ne upar wale ne humko de diya upar wale bole to need pg wale so let's do the best good night